Good morning, everybody. I see you didn't stay out too late last night because you're here bright and early this morning. That's a good thing. <clears throat> you know, I have the distinct pleasure this morning of introducing a wonderful guy. You're going to really get a lot of good stuff out of him. Myers has been my friend for a long, long time. I had the great pleasure of meeting Myers when we began his marketing quite a few years ago when he entered this industry. Myers is a strategist. He's a guy who will think for you and take his experience and his knowledge and help you make good decisions. He's also an author. He's also a guitar player. He probably won't tell you that, but I will because we share that in common. We, like, we, we, we both like to spend money on guitars we don't need. So when we do that, we call each other and make fun of each other for doing that. So let me, let me introduce my good friend and my favorite strategist, Myers Barnes. Thanks, ma'am. Appreciate it. <laughs> I think that would be a mislabeling to say that I'm a guitar player. I'm a guitar buyer. Uh, I've spent obscene amounts on them um, and end up giving most of them away because I get ticked off how bad I am. But uh, it's all a learning curve. Hey, we're here to talk about marketing. How many of you want to know something about marketing? Just kind of curious. By show of hands, how many of you? Okay. Uh, let me ask you something. If you get a cool idea, are you going to implement it? That's the question. Will you implement it? Say yes. All right, so we'll give you some cool ideas. The first thing you have to understand, marketing is a $600 billion industry. Most people don't get the idea of how much money $600 billion is, but it would work this way. Let me give you a perspective of money. Money works this way. How much is a million? How much is a billion? How much is a trillion? You hear the federal government clip out, we have 19 trillion in debt. You should gasp when you hear a trillion dollars. You should gasp when you hear a billion. But if I was to, to tell you how much a million is, here's what a million bucks would look like. If I said, I'm going to give you a dollar bill every second, I'll just give you a dollar bill every second, it would take me 12 days to give you a million bucks. So not, not that big a pile of money. Actually, a million dollars in thousand dollar bills would only be a four inch stack of money. That's all that it is. Now, a billion dollars, on the other hand, would work this way. So a million dollars would take me one buck, 12 days. Now, I start passing out a buck to you right now. It would take me 32 years to give you a billion dollars. You see the difference between a million and a billion. Now, a trillion dollars, that's something that's left to the calculators, the computers of the world, the superconductors, because a trillion dollars, if I started giving you a dollar, uh, every second, and if I just started passing it out to you, it would take me 32,000 years to give you a dollar every second to equal a trillion dollars. So uh, 600 billion, big, big industry, all right? And so the real question is, is how do I spend this money? Where do I invest the money today? And it's not a hard game to do it, but let's start back here. This is from 1964, it's now 52 years later. This was, this was, the internet, if you will, this was everything. We would run an ad in the paper, check this out, 64, watch this. What a great home, it was called the Leroy. That was the name, quite a masculine name uh, in those days. But if you look at it, here's one of the cool things, I'm trying to see if it will do it. But you can look at the model open hours. Look at the model open hours. They open from eight to eight, seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. God, tell that to a salesperson now. <laughs> 8 a.m., can you imagine it? I mean, you can't even do it. Now, watch this, the model's open at 11, and God, you know how the 11 o'clock traffic is, can't even get open on time. But uh, it was a hard business then, and you look at it, a home was about 87.60, down payment was 175, 52 bucks a month, and I'll make a suggestion, it was just as tough then to buy a home as it is today, but it's all changed, okay? Here's what it is, but look at what you would do. Now keep about the speed of this, watch this. So you'd read this ad, you tear this out. You would mail it, can you imagine that? You would mail it. Then they would put together a brochure, and then you, you follow the drift here. This would take three to four weeks of time. This was how people would buy a home in those days, but now we're moving and it's all changed. And I'm gonna to talk to you about change, but I'm also gonna to talk to you about a topic called disruption. Changes for the timid. Timid people uh, talk about change. Innovators, and here's the thing about innovation. Innovation keeps going whether you want to or not. Whether you want to innovate or not, innovation keeps going. And it just bypasses you, and either you buy in or you're going to be put out. But it's all changing. Change freaks people out. It brings up questions in their mind. It's an inevitability, but what a flip out it is for people when we talk about change. But it, again, totally inevitable. But this is the history of marketing, if you were to look at history. In 1867, this is where it all began. We had our first billboard. 
Can you imagine that? This is how you would do it. And they painted it on the side of buildings and they started plastering. And this was advertising. And from 1867 until 1888, something revolutionary happened. A company named Sears Roebuck. Now we go 21 years later. This was marketing for 21 years was billboard. Can you imagine that? That was your marketing campaign. That was your marketing strategy and you would do it. But then Sears came out in 1888 and they plugged out this catalog. And boy, did it, did it do all kinds of cool things. Now you could buy a house from that Sears catalog. As a matter of fact, it was $2,500 for a house, $700 for them to erect it. And you could buy a house from the Sears catalog. All right, now, so then we keep going and we keep marching, and then the next big march was radio. God, radio came in, and here's what everybody said, much like they said about the internet. They said, it's kind of a fad. Are people going to actually spend money on the radio? You know, people, people when, when change comes in or disruption comes in, the question is, are you going to buy into it? And in most cases, people don't buy into it. They hold and they hover, and they wonder what they should do. Radio came in and it was introduced and people said, you know, is this a fad? Is this going to stick? What's going to go on with it? Well, it kind of stuck for a while. How long did it stick? In 1941, about 20 years later, this was introduced. And in 1940, uh, you got to look at this. And so everybody looked at it and they said, no, 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 no. Now watch what's happening with marketing. You know what? This, here's how it is. We, here's how we market. We market with a billboard. We market with with these types of catalogs, we'll market with radio, but then they throw TV in and they said, that's just a what? Another fad. You know what, it's not gonna stick, it's not gonna do anything, I shouldn't put my money in TV. After all, I've got what? Billboards, I've got catalogs, I've got all this stuff, but don't put your money in what? In TV, a complete waste of energy to put it there, and then the first TV ad was run in 1941, and America runs on Bull of a Time. Okay, quite a fad, wasn't it? What a fad that was, and that took about 40 years, and then we were introduced in 1991 to the web, and that was the big fad, because people were convinced at that time, look, if you're gonna market, you're gonna market in a paper. If you're gonna market, you're gonna market on a billboard. If you're gonna market, you're gonna market on the radio. But for God's sakes, this is not gonna happen. Nobody, you know what, this was the biggest fad, and we all questioned it, and we all wondered, should we be on the internet? And we fought it, we struggled with it, because we don't like to what? What's the word? What don't we wanna do? We don't wanna change. We don't want to change. We want to hang on by our fingernails to outdated methodologies that don't work. So, you know, something happened in 1994, about three years later, they introduced the first banner ad. God, that was amazing. Have you clicked your mouse here? And people started clicking. That became such a revolution that by 1995, Windows came in and they readapted their entire software program to make it easy and people started advertising and advertising with the internet. But the thing was, is this another what? Is it another fad? Why would I do this? Why would I go there when I should be advertising my, spending my money on what? TV, billboards, print media, doing all this, but no, we don't want to do it. With the web, we've got to hang tight with it. All right, a lot of things happen with marketing. In 1998, this company named Google pops in. You, Google is ubiquitous. How many of you go to Google every day? How many of you go to Google? Every day. How many times a day? Just ask yourself, how many times a day do you go to Google? All right, now, then you have to ask yourself, why do you go to Google? To ask a what? To ask a question, okay? Uh, how many of you are marketing in here? How many of you are actively marketing in here? It's not a matter of how many people you attract, it's how many people that you stay in contact with. Here's one of the, the key concepts of marketing is this. Google is the most amazing thing that's ever been invented. Watch this, their whole mission statement was, they said to organize all the information of the world, make it universally accessible, which they did. You can get an answer from Google for anything that you would ever want. There's nothing that you would lack in knowledge. You put in the right keyword phraseology, go to the search bar, type it in, the answer will come. Now here's the question. You go to, the, go to Google, type in the search bar your question. All right, are you ready? Say yes. Come on, say yes. All right, you ready? Now you punch the search bar, and then you ask the question. Here's my question to you. Would you wait 20 minutes for Google to respond to you? Would you wait 10 minutes? Would you wait five minutes? Would you wait three minutes? No, you won't even wait 1.7 seconds for a video to buffer because you get too ticked off, you check out. And you know the ad, watch this, the ad comes on to the video and it's like, oh, for God's sakes, I gotta go five seconds? 
you know, waiting for this thing to go. And so, but Google comes in, man, and that was a revolution. And then here's the biggest, single biggest revolution that has ever happened was Facebook was founded in 2004. And there's your biggest advertising platform right now and nobody plays the game with it. All right, and, th and this is your game. Here, you know, you're wondering where to go. You're wondering how to do, but we're always questioning, is this the what? Is this a fad? Is it a fad? It's the third largest, po it's the first largest population in the entire world. What do you mean? It's bigger population than China, bigger population than India, bigger population than the United States of America. It is the single largest digital population in the entire world. 80%, watch this, 80%, Actually, 79.37% of people that are, that are on the, when we look at this and we say out of 100% of people that are on a, a computer, all right, all of you in this room, 80% of every person in the world today is on Facebook. 80%. And you're wondering, God, I wonder where I should reach people. If 80% of the entire world is on Facebook, should you be on Facebook? The answer is what? Yes, all right, now watch this. I heard somebody say this yesterday and I thought, what an idiot. Here's what they said, I don't believe in social media. I don't believe in social media. What do you mean you don't believe in social media? How can you not believe in social media? What do you mean? I don't believe in Facebook, I don't believe in Snapchat, I don't believe in, watch this. It's not whether you believe in Facebook, you got it all wrong. Facebook isn't what you believe in, it's called the internet. Everybody say the internet. If you go, I don't believe in social media, you don't believe in the what? The internet. How can you not believe in the internet? It is, it's the biggest thing. So Facebook comes in, and then YouTube was created in 2005, and we know that, we know that these guys own YouTube, and so the first and the second largest search engines in the world are here. Now this is another statistic for you to write down. 81%. By 2019, 81% of every TV commercial, 81% of every TV commercial will not be on TV. It will be on YouTube. You will have 81% of all commercials being run on a YouTube video. Should you be on video right now? Simple answer is what? Yeah, see, you can't wait for it to happen. That's what innovation is. Innovation is, is looking at it and going, it's not a fad. It's a truism, but 81% of every TV dollar that's existing today will then be generated in just two years to YouTube videos. You gotta get there before this happens. All right, now, and by the way, people always ask where I get the statistics. I just make them up. No, but, no, but you gotta be accurate because people are Googling right now statistics, wondering where it is. You know what, if you're looking for a great, where, where to go with your marketing dollars, you should just go straight to Twitter. Most of you aren't on Twitter, but go straight to Twitter and just hit Pew Research. Follow Pew Research. It'll give you every statistic that you're looking for. Uh, all right, now, so here's where we're going. 2007, then the iPhone was invented. That's 10 years old and it's, that's ubiquitous. Everybody carries it. It's our joystick of life. 2008, texting comes in and eclipses the cell phone usage. People don't talk anymore, they just what? Text. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the phenomena of life out here. And then 2007, Siri was born. And that's what's artificial intelligence. The founders of Google have degrees. Their degrees are in artificial intelligence. That's an actual degree. What does an artificial intelligence degree teach? That machines now think for what? People. You can go to Siri, can you imagine that? Like I can go to Siri and talk to her. And I go, hey Siri, and Siri says, hey Big Daddy. Because I programmed her, okay? Now watch this, so Big Daddy, she talks to me. And I can ask Siri anything, and she's gonna give me a what? An answer, here, within another two year period, here, here's what the former CEO of Google has said. He said, people don't go to Google anymore looking for information, they're actually looking for the final. They want Google to make the decision for them. They said within two years, they're gonna start making decisions for people and they're gonna put it out there and go, don't just ask us a question, we're gonna give you the what? The final decision based on data and we're gonna put it together and go, based on the data that we've received, this is how you should what? So we'll stop thinking, the machines will start thinking for us and this is where technology is taking us, 2010, Instagram was created, Snapchat was created, and this is called a platform. Watch this, Facebook is a platform, TV is a platform, radio is a platform, the newspaper was a platform. The question is, when you're asking about your marketing dollars, here's your question, what platform 
am I going to spend my money? What platform am I going to take it? You know, should you be on Snapchat? We'll talk about this. 2013 hashtags came to Facebook. There's the biggest question. How much hash could a hashtag hash if hashtag could tag hash? You know, then you can Google it and it'll tell you. Uh, but you know, do you even understand what, the, what a hashtag is about? Do you understand the importance of it in a marketing campaign today? None of this stuff is fad, folks. This is the stuff that's what? Real time. And the real deal is this, watch this. I don't believe in social media. Are you nuts? Watch this, social media is the highest form of word of mouth marketing, W-O-M-M. -M. You wanna spend marketing money, you wanna do everything. Everything that marketing is, is about word of mouth. What are other people saying? How many of you have ever ordered anything on Amazon? You ever ordered anything on Amazon? What do you do? You go for a rating. If you see 4.7 stars out of a possible five with 4,000 people that recommend it, will you pull the trigger? Simple answer is what? Yes, yeah, see that's called word of mouth marketing. And this is why you're supposed to be on social media. This is why the money's supposed to be going to this. Now, I hear people all the time and they go, well, you know, Mars, I got somebody in my company that's pretty good at that. Well, what do you mean they're pretty good? Well, they're pretty good at it. You know, they understand technology. And I want you to write this down. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. This is left to professionals now. This is beyond your grasp. You're gonna to have, to have to bring in professional resources for this, but this is all that it is. Facebook, Snapchat. Here's, here's why it's perplexing. It's only 12 years. We've been in this, this social media sphere of platforms for 12 years and people are still questioning, is it a what? Is it a fad? No, it's not a fad, it's where we're headed. Watch this, and you can go, well, what's the next fad? I don't know, but right now, this is where you're supposed to be. Right here, right here. You're not supposed to be in TV. Because in TV, 80% of all TV dollars are gonna be spent where? YouTube, okay? So it's all social media, but here's our problem. It's only 12 years old, so we fight it. And we hang on to that which we've done in the past, and that which we don't understand, we don't master. But you, you gotta believe in this. You gotta be over here, and this is where it's come. We've gone from the Flintstones now to the Jetsons. And that's where marketing is. How many of you, uh, I just can date you, but how many of you ever remember the show The Jetsons? It was actually a great predictor because essentially everything that was on the Jetson came true except for that little uh, treadmill where it would do a do-over with Jane in about three seconds, but I can promise you that's on the way too. Uh, you know, but the, here's where we're going. We're into this future, but here's the biggest thing that I can talk to you about is this word called disruption. What is disruption? Disruption is to is happening in the home building industry. We're just one of the last of the people to, to hang on. See, Amazon is a disruptor. What do you mean it's a disruptor? Amazon has no physical location. Amazon doesn't have a store. It's now the third largest retailer in the entire world, but they don't own a what? They don't own a store. That's disruption, folks. That changes everything. Did you, if you read the, any news that came out Monday, watch this, there will be 200 Sears that are gonna close. Do you understand? 200 Sears. There'll be another 156 Kmarts that are gonna close this year. So they're closing 200 Sears, 156 Kmarts. They're gonna close 78 Barnes and Nobles. Watch this. We're disrupted. We don't need physical locations to what? All right, Elon Musk in 2020, Elon Musk in 2020, Tesla, watch this. He's gonna introduce the first self-driving car and there's five other people in that field. People are gonna drive by themselves. Here, now hang with me. What is a video? What is a video? A video is selling houses without a model. A video is selling houses without salespeople. Should you be there? Simple answer is what? Yes, you've got to embrace it. But see, here's where disruption is. And this is, this, is, this is ambush the world. And I'm trying to get you to the future, not keep you where we are today, but into the future. The world's largest taxi company owns no vehicles. That's disruption. I says Facebook is like NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, Fox. Watch this. It's a media company, but the world's largest media company doesn't create media. It has other people create it. You create all the media, and that's called word of mouth what? Marketing. Okay, you got more people in the world, uh, more people in the world that are on this single website than any other, any other platform that's out there. Should you be advertising on the world's largest? The answer is what? 
Yes, Brian's going to talk to you about something called retargeting. If I mention retargeting, let's do this. How many of you have ever researched a product? You know what I'm talking about? You, like, you, know, you, you go look at something. I don't care what it is. Maybe you look at a tire. Maybe you look at a car. Maybe you look at whatever it is. But you look at it, and then the next day, whenever you log into the Internet, all you see is what? What you're doing. That's called retargeting. You know how that happens? Watch this. They plant a cookie. It's real simple. Here's the greatest, here's the fastest marketing program in the world. Everybody say, give it to me. Come on. All right, watch this. Go to Facebook, place an amazing ad. Place in an amazing ad, go to Facebook, or just do things that'll drive them to their website. Drive them straight to your website. When they get to your website, you plant a cookie, and the moment that that cookie is planted, every time, Every time they go log on, the only thing they're going to see is your what? Your website. That's it. It's that simple. It's that easy. Unless, of course, you just want to what? Keep hanging on to the stuff that no longer what? Works or is relevant. I, Alibaba, most valuable retailer, has no inventory. Airbnb, world's largest accommodation, owns no real estate. And Keller Williams is now the world's largest real estate company, and they do zero marketing. And the reason they do zero marketing is they're 100% on social what? Media. OK, is it changing? The answer is what? Yes. But the real answer is it's not changing, it's disrupting. And this is the biggest disruption of life. Of all the disruptions that I'm talking to you about is Starbucks. There are only 312 million people in the United States, and 70 million of them go to Starbucks every week. Starbucks is no longer a brand. Starbucks is a habit. How many of you have a Starbucks habit? Oh, I see a cup right over there. Can you imagine that? Starbucks is a habit. You go there, and you'll spend 5 bucks a day, 200 days. Watch this. And you just go, God, I got a $1,000 coffee. What? Habit. It's one of the craziest things, but it's a habit. It's a habit. It's a habit. We go to a Starbucks. It's no longer a brand. It's just purely a habit that's come out here. Here, I'm going to show you another habit. All right? Really ready? Watch this. Here's the biggest habit in real estate. This is a habit. Zillow is a habit. They walk out of a model home. What's in their hand? Cell phone. And then they're going to look at something, and the only thing that's going to pop up, because you can't out Zillow Zillow, baby. You cannot out Zillow Zillow. And the only thing that's going to pop up is Zillow. Does that make sense? And then they're going to do something called intercept marketing. Let me help you with what intercept marketing is. Why does Burger King build next to McDonald's and builds next to Hardee's? Why does Chevrolet build next to a, a, a dealership next to Ford that builds next to, you follow what's happening? It's called intercept marketing. Intercept marketing works this way. We ride down the road. I see the golden arches. And I say, hey, you want to turn into the golden arches? Somebody else sees what in the car? They go, no, 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 no. I want my burger flame kiss. So what do we do? We get torn in. Does that make sense? And so we go. We've just been intercepted. Here, here's a cheap marketing campaign. It's one of the most effective going. It's called bandit signs, snipe signs. You know what I'm talking about? Watch this. They program their GPS. They're driving. Intercept marketing of the highest degree Still says this, watch this, intercept them before they turn in. Put your signs out, put the signs out, make them turn in. Does that make sense? Okay, now, but Zillow's a habit. You can't get away with it. And so what Zillow does is because you won't advertise on Zillow, is this happens. Your house is going to be, if you list it, it's going to go to Zillow. You do know that, right? But if, you don't, if you're not Zillow premier, if you're not spending the money, what Zillow does is put every other realtor there. And so the only picture that appears is not yours, not your agents, and not your company. It's four other realtors who are paying for the Zillow Premier. And then they call up and they go, hey, I see your home. I see Richfield's home. And I wanted information. They don't know anything about your house. The only thing they know about is what? Their stuff. So let me, let me help you with something. You're selling a ton of real estate for other people because you're not advertising on what? Zillow. You don't have a choice anymore, man. You don't have a choice. These are disrupting people. So where do I spend my money? The question was asked in 1905, and a guy named John Wanamaker said this statement. He said, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. I just don't know which half. So the job of us today, and Brian's going to bring in some tactical things for you, is where to, where to pinpoint the wasted half. But here's, here's a shift for you, if you can. you got to get here. The problem with business today is, how many of you are builders? How many of you are builders? Okay, bad, bad answer. And I love you when I say it. 
here's the thing, you're not a builder, you're a technology company that builds homes. You're a technology company that builds homes because the technology company is the one that's gonna dominate going forward. And you know what, you don't have to be a national, you can crush a national. The Davids versus the Goliaths. And it all comes out, watch this, if you were a technology company and you spent more time thinking about the technological aspects of it, you'd sell more houses, but essentially, watch this, it's divided into two, business, two different sections, but you're a technology company, you just happen to sell homes. Here, people ask me all the time, they go, how do you stay booked six months to a year at a time? And I go, because I'm not a speaker, I'm a marketer. I'm a marketer that happens to speak. Does that make sense? I've never called myself a speaker. I've never called myself a strategist or a consultant. I just go, I'm a sales and marketing guy, man. And what I do is speak, consult, and teach. But I've never thought of myself as a speaker. I've always thought of myself as, watch this, same deal. Watch this, I'm a technology company. MBA is a technology company. And I happen to speak. You've got to look at this and go, I'm not a builder. I'm a technology company. And you've got to buy into it. You've got to embrace it because this is where we're going. Because this is, you know, we build models. I was just talking to a friend a few seconds before this, and I said, if I could just get you past the hurdle and do this and realize you're gonna to have to spend 50, 60,000 bucks on a website. Oh my God. And I would go, well, wait a second, hang on. How many of you would spend 400,000 on a model home? Just raise your hand if you'd spend 400,000. All right, now watch this. But we know that 96% of people say before they come on site, they're gonna to go to the website. Why would you not spend 40, 50,000 on the website because there's your most important model home. It's not the model anymore. If they, don't, if they don't know where you are, then they don't find you. All right, now, so here's, here's the trick. Where do you spend? Brian's gonna be carrying you, but we know this, 91% of people today, regardless of age or demographic, keep a cell phone within arm's reach 24-7. 24-7, it's sitting there. How many of you were in a hotel last night? That's a loaded question. How many of you had your cell phone next to your bed? Just kind of curious, all of you, what's with you? Uh, you know, we keep a cell phone next to us at all times. Some of you sleep with it. Uh, you know, it, oh no, no, believe me, I know. I travel all the time, my wife sleeps with a cell phone. She's got a better companion with her cell phone than me. Uh, now, here, here's the thing, but we keep this within. So you're going, where do I spend my money? Well, that's where I'd spend it because that's the joystick of life right there. Cell phones are the joystick of life. God, man, we have them everywhere. Brian told me he left his cell phone in his hotel room. If I'd have left my cell phone in this hotel room, I wouldn't have shown up. I'd be back there going to get it. If I walked out today and somebody said, your life or your phone, I'd go, take my life. You know, but don't, 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 no, you can't have the phone, okay? It's the joystick of life. So where do I spend my money? On a mobile-first website. And if you don't know what the difference in a mobile-first website is, all right, you ready? Say yes. 78% of all, 78% of all traffic that goes to your website, this is 78%, eight out of 10 people that are searching you on the weekend, 80% of them come in through a cell phone. Eight out of 10 people come in through a cell phone. So if your website isn't designed mobile friendly, they don't even see you. They can't, they can't get through it. They can't wade through your website. You made it too difficult for them. So every website has to be designed to this phone. Everything has to be designed. It's gotta be a complete redesign. It's gotta be mobile friendly. And by the way, if it's not a mobile friendly website, you can do everything you want about wanting to be number one on the search engines and do this, but Google won't even recognize you unless you have a mobile first website. They just kick you out of the system and they go, it's not a relevant website anymore. So do you have to spend money on the website? Everybody say yes. Yeah. Are you gonna spend money on the website? Say yes. Yeah. Are you gonna do it now? Say yes. No, I got quieter on that one, okay? You got it, but you gotta buy into this stuff. So, I'm gonna show you the greatest website on the planet Earth today. And it's only for today. Because something else is gonna be cooler later, but if, I'd go to royaloakshomes.com and you'll see what a proper website is supposed to look like. And you would see on this website six calls to action on the telephone that says what? Call me, call me, call me, call me, call me call me. You can't even scroll down it without call me, call me, call me, call me. People are asking all the time, how do I get more traffic from my website? It's called a call to action. Get them to what? 
Right, but this is the coolest website that's ever been invented at this moment in time because here's what they did. They reinvented it and said, we're not building it for a desktop, we're not building it for a tablet, we're building it for a what? A cell phone first. And man, that's it. There's your template. You look at that, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get it, and it'll carry you forward. Now, if I was going to, so if I was spending money, and Brian's going to get deeper in it, it would be on my, it would be a mobile-friendly website. Uh, and then if I was going to spend money myself, I realized this, and here's, again, let me back this up. 78% of all traffic that goes to Zillow goes in through a what? Come on, what's it say? Goes in through it. Now, help, let me help you with Zillow for a second. And so Zillow works this way, Zillow Mobile Facts. 500, do you understand this? A half a billion people a month. A half a billion people a month worldwide, 270 homes per second are going to what? Zillow. There's, I mean, this is where they're going, man. You can't help it. That's where they are. All right, now, and 78% of those are going in through a what? A cell phone. This is where you're spending. This is where you go. This is how it goes. All right, now. Here's the thing about Zillow, if I was going to help you with this. There was a great marketer, and his name was P.T. Barnum. Barnum and Bailey. And P.T. was asked the question, they said, P.T., do you ever get discouraged that people steal your ideas, all your marketing ideas? And he said, nah, not really. He said, because I'm the ultimate marketer. And he said, and nobody can out P.T. P.T. He said, how do you out P.T. P.T.? Nobody can out P.T. P.T. Now watch this, I'll make this suggestion. You can't out Zillow, Zillow. There's no out Zillow in them. Zillow is there. And so essentially, I'm just, you know, it, it, Brian will dig down deeper with it if it were me. Uh, how do I run my own business? It's all based on social media. Just go straight to the social media, have a mobile friendly website, plant cookies, and then just retarget the crap out of them so that they hate your guts every time they see your website when they log on to it. Does this all make sense? Say yes. Okay, so I, I gave you the broad spectrum. Now, let me, let me introduce you to Brian, because Brian's going to uh, give you a different one. Brian's a, kind of a unique guy. Brian not only has a marketing company that's uh, decades in existence, which is pretty cool that you can evolve through decades, decades, if you can imagine that, in a world of disruption. Uh, but not only does he have a marketing company, but he has the largest Caldwell Banker franchise in his state. So if you're gonna talk about real estate marketing and you own a marketing company, but you also own the largest real estate franchise in your state, do you think he can teach you something about where to spend your money? Simple answer is what? Yes, okay, let's welcome Brian. Thank you, my friend. All right, good morning. Everybody awake? Did you, did you keep up with Myers? He's moving right along, man. All right, okay, I got some slides to move through here. All right, for 30 years, I've been a professional interrupter. That's what I've done, that's my career. As a marketing guy, I've been a marketing guy for 30 years. Matter of fact, I've been to every IBS show for 30 years. I've never missed a single one in 30 years. Speak at a lot of them, but here's the key. As a marketer, I learned to be an interrupter. I learned how to interrupt you with radio, with television. I learned how to interrupt you with direct mail. I learned how to interrupt you with all the tools that existed for many years. You know what that's worth to me today? Guess. Very little. Why? Because the marketing world, the marketing realm, is no longer a realm of interruption. It's a realm of permission. I no longer work to get your attention to drag you into my sales center so I can sell you a house. Here's the statistic, guys. Everything I'm going to talk about builds on this right here. 100% of your sales in 2017 will begin as a silent visitor to your website. Or they were influenced by someone who was already a silent visitor to your website. I bet there's not a week that passes that I don't talk to a client who says to me, ah, you know, I'm old school, I don't need that stuff, still says that to me. And my response is always the same, well, then you really don't want to be in business in two years, do you? Because the world has changed that radically. For my business, for me to keep up, it's been like drinking out of a fire hydrant. 
to stay on top of this. My staff would be like, if you give me one more white paper to read, I swear I will kill you because I'm shoving white papers their way. You gotta read this, this is about hashtags. You gotta read this, this is about this. If you wanna keep up, you gotta stay on top of this stuff. 100% of your visitors. All right, here's the sad part. One to three of those visitors will ever be captured out of 100. How many of you know how many people are visiting your website on a monthly basis? How many of you know? You got a number right there. Okay, a couple of you. Most I talk to don't know. What's even worse, if you don't know how many are visiting your website, then you're not capturing them. And if you're not capturing them, guess what? 100% are disappearing. You know, Myers talked about the website a little bit. Let me just hit that for one split second. Your website is the place in your business world today where you are either picked or eliminated. It really is that simple. You're either chosen or eliminated. It doesn't matter how good a builder you are. I've been in this business for 30 couple years and I've never met a builder yet who didn't tell me he was a quality builder. I've never met one. Anybody here who's not a quality builder? Okay? No volunteers anyway. So what's the deal with that? If we're not capturing these folks, when they come to our website, we are missing out in ways that you just will never understand. Everybody remember this? I fear you are underestimating the sneakiness, sir. Your primary job today as a marketer, as a builder, as a technology company, as Meyer said, is very simple. You need to move as many website leads as humanly possible from sneaky visitor because if they sneak in and they sneak out, what did you get from that? Nada. Not a darn thing. As a matter of fact, if they snuck back out, your website was probably so boring that they fell asleep before they clicked to the next site. And most builder websites are like that. They are just not there. Mars said, you got to spend 50 grand on a website. I want to tell you what, it is the deal. Back in the day, we didn't think anything of spending $8,000 on a weekend with a big builder, Washington Post. What's a, what's a half page ad in the Washington Post? $10,000? Today, we have to figure out how to capture those sneaky visitors and bring them in and turn them into our leads. So, anybody know what the rule of seven is? <clears throat> rule of seven is very simple. It simply says you've got to reach out and touch a person at least seven times in seven different ways, seven manners, that you're going to finally get their attention. Well, there are a million ways to do it online today, and we're going to talk about Well, that's not really true. There are a handful of ways to do that online today, and we'll talk about some of those here in a little bit. But how many of you have a, a system that you're making sure that you're reaching out, touching that customer at least seven times. First off, you have to capture them on your website. I can't tell you how many websites I visit that have zero capture tools. You have a contact me page and that's it. How many of you get very many contact forms on a regular basis? People just don't want to go there. So we've got to figure out other ways, more creative ways that when they come to your website, when they're impressed with your website, that you can capture them. Because if you can't capture them, then you have no way to reach out to them. You have no way to follow up with them, if you will. You have no way to stay in front of them and create this rule of seven where you can capture them. Today, I hear builders a lot of times saying, my website traffic, I mean, my model traffic is really down. How many of you have experienced that? Is your model traffic down? Then you are in luck. Seriously, you are in luck. Do you know why your model traffic is down today? It isn't because your marketing stinks, what well, it might be. It isn't because they can't find you. It's because they're doing everything online before they get to you. And when they show up at your model today, and I'm going to demonstrate this to you in a little bit, you better believe that a 5% closing ratio, that's history. That's history. This notion that if we close 5%, we got a good sales team, that's nonsense. It doesn't work that way anymore. That's gone, long gone. <clears throat> so doing things the builder sales machine way. That's what we're here to talk about today. What is the builder sales machine? It's three things, and I'll call the last one a bonus. Number one, your website. If your website isn't killer, you're eliminated. 
forget about it. They don't have time to come visit you and see that you have nail pops in your model and then eliminate you. They don't have time to come to your model and see that the brick on the front stoop is broken and eliminate you. They don't do that anymore. They Google it, they find your website, and if your website isn't up to par with today's cruising patterns, with today's behaviors online, you're eliminated because you're what? You're out of date. You're not cool. You're just not there. And Myers is right. If you don't have a mobile site that's working, Google doesn't even care that you exist. Forget about it. Number two, SEO and pay-per-click. Everything, everything today begins online. I was shocked that Myers said what he said because I'm going to say it too. We are to the threshold of the point, folks, where Google will be thinking for us. We don't go to Google to find things. We go to Google to get answers. And we do it day in and day out, time and time and time and time again. Where's the best builder in my area? Home builders, this area. We do lots of SEO for our clients. We help our clients become first in Google, if you will. What does that mean? It means that Google's a search engine. It looks for one thing, basically. Relevance because of words. That's what it's all about. How are you keyword loading? How are you making your site work? Pay-per-click is the other half. If search is a coin today, and it is, it's a two-sided coin, just like any coin. On one side is pay-per-click. On the other side is SEO, organic optimization. Here's the deal. <clears throat> Google will never tell you this, but it is true without question. If you want to have good organic rankings today, you better be doing pay-per-click. Do you believe that? Anybody doing both? I can tell you without question, the clients we do SEO for who do not do pay-per-click will see an immediate spike when they start pay-per-click. Why? Well, if you're Google, why not? How does Google make its money? SEO? No. They don't even like us because we take their business, because statistically 70% of people who visit a website don't click on the ads, they go to the organic rankings. Why is that? Because we believe the ads are what? Ads, we don't trust ads. Google's like God, we, we can believe that, what they say. But the fact of the matter is, Google enriches your organic results when you do pay-per-click, we'll keep going. Number three. Are you ready for this? How many of you have a CRM and marketing automation going on right now? If you do not, please come up here at the end of this thing and we need to talk. You will not make it the next two years if you are not doing marketing automation and have a proper CRM in place. I'm not talking constant contact or MailChimp. Those are okay and they work, I get it. But I'm talking a real marketing automation package that will allow you to do accurate follow-up. It will allow you to do all the things that a real marketing automation package like Infusionsoft will allow you to do. Reach out to those customers. Nurture those customers. Keep them going forward. And lastly, the builder sales machine way, social media. You know, I have on here that it's a bonus, but it's a bonus in the same way that directional signs are a bonus. How many of you still use guest cards at your models? Yeah, makes sense. How many of you still have on the guest card, how did you find us directional signs? I still see it now and then. Well, here's the deal. You only want to put on that card, if you still use one, things that are, what, actionable, things that matter. Guest card with directional signs on it isn't actionable. You know why? Because you're not ever going to stop using those guest cards or those directional signs. We know they work. I promise you in 30 couple years of doing this, dollar for dollar, there is zero better investment than the free stuff online than directional signs. They're a great payback. So it's not actionable. Social media is much the same way. If you're not doing it, you have to do it and you're not going to get rid of it because it's just a staple. It's got to be there. <clears throat> okay, so the un unbreakable builder sales machine formula, I'm going to give it to you real quick, and then we'll go through it. Websites times online capture rate equals prospect inventory. In other words, how many leads are you getting? How many are you capturing? That's your inventory. Number two, take your prospect inventory times your appointment rate 
That's what's going to deliver hot prospects. Your marketing automation should be able to let you know who's a hot prospect and why they're a hot prospect. Number three, hot prospects times your closing ratio. That's what drives sales success. Now I'm gonna skip through this. You'll get to see it again, don't panic. <clears throat> So let's walk through it together a little bit. I'm gonna take you through this because this builder sales machine is not the, the cure-all. It is the basic, if you're not doing this, you're going to get hosed package. Are you with me? In today's world, if you're not doing what I'm about to show you, you're not gonna make it. I don't care if you're old school or not, you're not gonna make it because the world has shifted and is shifting so far from what we did 15 years ago that it's not even the same. Uh, well, I'm gonna get ahead of myself. So let's go through this. Let's say we have a thousand leads. In the old way, in the old way of doing things, huh, I have a 3% online capture rate. That's, that's kind of mythical, because the fact of the matter was, even in the last five years, very few, if any, builders were capturing 3%. Maybe one. Maybe a half. It's just not happening. Because number one, they didn't have any capture tools. They didn't have the mechanisms on their website to say to that person, hey, I want to talk to you. Hey, call me. Hey, grab this file. Hey, give me your email. Hey, let's go for a date. Whatever you have to say. You've got to capture that lead. So if you have a 3% closing ratio or a 3% capture rate, 1,000 website leads, you're going to get a prospect inventory of roughly 30. If you go over to the builder sales machine way, you're going to capture more like 15%. And that's not unreasonable. Actually, that might be a little bit low if you really kick it up. All of a sudden, you have a prospect inventory of 115. The old way, prospect inventory of 30. And you have to now get some appointments. So your appointment rate is maybe 2%. Again, high. I don't see most builders getting that. With the builder sales machine way, prospect inventory of 150, you should be able to close 20% of those folks into a meeting at your sales center. It's a very, very doable number. And last, the closing ratio. Again, 5%. If, if you're using the number 5% as a closing ratio, please, it's time to bury that thing. You know, there's the old saying, if your horse is dead, for goodness sakes, dismount. Dismount that 5% notion. Because that goes back to the day where we advertised, they showed up at our model because they got in their car, they drove around. When they got to us, they didn't really have a clue what we had to offer. They'd never seen the models. That world's behind us. Today, when they show up, you better be closing 10%. And I'm actually going to suggest it should be more like 15% with a couple additions. <clears throat> All right, so here's the world today. Attract, capture, nurture, sell. Unfortunately, in the past, all we did was attract and sell. Yeah, we, we called it a follow-up program, and we'd call them, and we tried, but we, did, we didn't have any need to capture and nurture because they walked in the sales center, they were effectively what? Captured. Well, today, they don't. Today they don't walk into the sales center until they're ready to rock and roll, until they're ready to make it happen. So all of a sudden when they walk in, instead of a 5% closing ratio, you really do need to be looking at a 10, 15% closing ratio. So leads are the secret sauce, guys. It's not about sales anymore. Forget about sales. Leads are the secret sauce. Whoops. <clears throat> there. Sales are the outcome. If you pursue leads the way you have to in today's world, the rest will happen. The rest will take care of itself. If you're a builder and you build a faulty foundation, can you fix it? Can you fix it? Mark, can you fix it? When you build a crappy foundation and your foot is sinking, can you fix it from the second floor? There's no chance. Well, guess what? In today's world, we have the same situation. If we're not taking care of leads, you can't fix it from the second floor. It's broke, you broke it when you put the foundation in wrong. We're focusing so much on the sales that we're missing the crucial element, which is leads. And where do those leads begin? 100% of them, where do they begin? Come on, online. Do you believe that? Is there anybody who doesn't believe that? Not a soul, at least no one who's willing to raise their hand. It is an absolute fact. <clears throat> so, I'm not gonna talk too much about attraction today. Um, because there are a dozen other seminars that you can go to where they'll be talking about that. 
But I did something that, that surprised even me. I sat my team down in the conference room and I said, okay, how many tools do we have at our disposal today that we can use to attract prospects to our website? And that's pretty much it, guys. SEO, pay-per-click, social media, blogging, retargeting, Myers talked about that for just a moment, digital ads, <clears throat> realtors, referrals, direct to web, signs, word of mouth, print. That's, that's pretty much what you got going for you. Our job is to get them to the website, deliver a website that is not only credible but reputable, but that then begins the process, the crucial process of capturing that lead. We need to capture them. How do we capture them? Well, we capture them with website forms. We capture them with landing pages. We can capture them with email. We can capture them with SMS. Does anybody know what the average rate of capture with SMS is? Anybody want to venture a guess? With a text, if a salesperson sends you a text, what's the odds that you'll look at it? 100%. That's exactly right. 100%. Is it a 100% chance that they'll open your email? Not a chance. Maybe seven if your subject line is really good. Maybe eight, maybe 10. But it's not going to happen. But with SMS, it's 100% that they're going to look at that text. I have, uh, anybody know who Elliot Eisenberg is? Elliot used to be an economist with the NAHB. Elliot's a good friend of mine. Every uh, week, Elliot writes a blog. It's called Elliot something. I don't even remember what it is. I read the crazy thing because he promises me two things. It's only 77 words, number one. I got time for that. I can do that. And it comes out at 1130 at night. So the next morning when I sit down for coffee and open my email, how many of you do that? Before you get to work, I'm, you know, I'm still in home mode. I'm sitting there reading emails. The first one I see is Elliot's. Well, that's a pretty darn good approach at email, let me tell you. And it works for him. Texting is way better. <laughs> so nurture. We've captured the lead now. We have a powerful website that has capture tools on it. We've gotten their attention. We weren't eliminated. That's the key. If you're eliminated at the first step of the process, it, it, it's over. The gig's over. You've lost. You can't risk it. You can't play that game. You know, websites are worth more than $5,000 today, guys. It is Grand Central Station. If you're not spending 10 or 15 or 20 grand on your web, you're fooling yourself. I get it. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for anybody. I rode through this recession just with you. <clears throat> and in 2008, I lost probably 75% of my clients in a couple month period. I mean, gone. And most of them are gone. It's not like they went away and came back. They're just gone. So I know what it's like to be sitting there looking at spending 10, 15, 20 grand on a website. But I'm telling you, if you're not doing it today, you're not creating the kind of experience that is needed. How often do you need to build a new website? I hear it all the time. How often do I need a new website? Anybody want to guess? Two years? You're dead on. That's correct. Why two years? Every two years? Are you kidding me, Brian? I've seen websites that are 22 years old, I, I believe. At least they act like it, and that's the problem. It isn't that the website's broken or that it's ugly even. The problem with two-year-old website is that it doesn't adhere to the behaviors that we've adopted today. The way we scroll a website, the way we look at a website, the way, the way browsers present a website, it's changing so fast. So two years out, you need to be looking at your website going, you know what, it doesn't behave the way it should. It's like an old piece of software. <clears throat> if you've got an old piece of software, it doesn't mean that it's bad software. It means that the computers grew up so fast that your software is no longer able to keep up. Well, your website's much the same way. So nurture. How do we nurture clients? Once we've captured them, how do we nurture them? Well, phone calls, that's a classic. Emails, that's a classic. Automated campaigns, if you're not doing it, you will be, I promise. Handwritten notes can never, can never go wrong with a handwritten note. How many of you know that you can automate handwritten notes today? How cool is that? I mean, literally, handwritten. I can automate those things for you. They'll go out to your clients, and they'll be handwritten, and you won't have to touch a thing. Now, that's cool. <clears throat> I keep pushing the button. Handwritten notes, social media. Social media is a, 
nurture slash not so much nurture tool, but it's in there because it has to be because we're staying in front of that audience. We're constantly, I won't say we're nurturing them, but we're constantly in front of them, letting them know who we are. SMS, retargeting <coughs> events. Those are some of the primary nurture tools that you have at your disposal. And then lastly, sell. You know, that's the old hat stuff. We assess their needs and wants. We demonstrate and we differentiate. You know, there's the biggie. If I can leave any word in your head that doesn't go with the seminar, it's differentiate. Stefan and I were talking about that. You got to be different. You got to figure out how you're different. Like I said, I've never met a builder who isn't a quality builder, but most of us try to just outdo the next builder. And when you're trying to just be better than the next guy, it's easy to beat better. Different is hard to beat. Better isn't. How many of you know the average lineman in the NFL runs the 40-yard dash in five to 5.5 seconds. The average lineman. I have a good friend who went into college football. And in high school, this dude was lightning fast. And he went into college football, and I ran into him not too long ago, and he said, man, when I got to college football, the difference was in high school, I could outrun the lineman by six seconds. In college football, the 325 pound guys could run as fast as I could. The difference between an NFL lineman and an NFL running back is one second. One second. So is better really better? When, when you get to that point in life, a little bit better doesn't make you different. You've got to be different. You've got to look at how to be different. <clears throat> Build relationship, ask for the sale. This is all the staple stuff that you guys do every day after you've gotten them to your sales center. And by the way, 15% closing ratio is your target today. So what is this? An o OSC puts you over the top. <clears throat> In 2017, once you've implemented the principles of the builder sales machine, kind of talked about them here, there's one more step. Nothing will pay the kind of dividends that an online sales counselor is going to pay. Why is that? How many of you have online sales programs right now? Raise your hand real high. Come on, be proud. Look around you guys. If you're near that person, pat them on the back and say, way to go. <clears throat> Listen, I have 100 sales agents that work for me. Out of that 100, I have maybe, I'm gonna, I wish I had 10 that were technically savvy. Out of that 10, I bet I only have two who really, truly do what an online sales counselor should do, which is live or die. Live or die off of what? On line activity. The salespeople who are setting in your models today are not living or dying by online activity. They're living or dying by who's walking in the door and you and them are both missing it. You're missing the point. Who's walking in the door isn't the issue anymore. It's who's visiting your website and are you keeping them? Are you capturing them? Are you nurturing them? And then when they walk into the model, you've, done, you've already talked to them 15 times. Couple on the phone, handful in marketing automation. Are they ready to buy a house? Yeah, you're darn right they're ready to buy a house. <clears throat> so let's take it one more step. Instead of the builder sales machine strategy that I showed you earlier, I'm gonna crank it up one more. Let's say you have 2,000 leads because now you have an online sales rep. And the first question is, well, just because I have an online sales rep, why did my leads double? Anybody want to venture a guess? Because what you pay attention to is what will grow. And when you hire an online salesperson whose dedicated life is to take care of online leads, you will begin to do the things that deliver that person more online leads. And two to 5,000 a month for a builder is not bad. I've got lots of builders who get 5,000 leads a month online. It's a good number. Two, it's okay. It's not great, it's just okay. <clears throat> So when you have 2,000 web leads, your online closing ratio all of a sudden is 20%, and I would honestly suggest it could be 25. There are OSC teams out there who are closing 25%. Not closing the deal, but capturing them, making them a lead. So your prospect inventory is 400. If you take a prospect inventory of 400, and all of a sudden your appointment rate goes up. Why? Because this person knows how to convert an online lead to an appointment. All of a sudden, that number goes up. 
And then now you have 100 prospects at a 15% closing ratio is 15 sales. So what do you want, 15 sales or 0.6? It's a rhetorical question, it's a silly question, but we all know the answer. We all want 15. If we really want 15 sales in today's world, you've gotta be paying attention to leads first, online success first. All the other stuff will begin to take care of itself just a little bit. So one last time, I'm gonna run it by you, the unbreakable sales machine formula. Website leads times online capture rate equals your prospect inventory. We all want a high prospect inventory. We all want a lot of people in our funnel that we're nurturing, that we're working. Your prospect inventory times your appointment rate. In other words, how many of those prospects can you turn into people who show up at your sales center or your model or whatever it is that you're selling out of? There's your hot prospects. If you have a good marketing automation system, it will tell you which prospects are hot based on their behaviors. We use Infusionsoft, it will tell me based on the number of flames that that person has. We were doing a demo not too long ago and one of my certified guys was talking to the client and he said, let's use my account record, I'm a five flamer. And the guy started laughing, we're like, what is that? So, oh, never mind. <laughs> Hot prospects times sales closing ratio is your sales success, guys. That's the formula. There's a lot more that we can drill into in 25 minutes. I couldn't go much further than that. Uh, if you have any questions, come on up and see us afterwards. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Have a great show here in Orlando. God bless.